Well, Gable and I found this uh, small stand of saplings that are pretty much dead. Coming over pretty easily. So this is where we're collecting our material. And our camp is in there. There goes Gable heading back to base camp. We've been cutting and trekking for about 15 minutes and I think we got most of the materials we need. So, base camp. We've been coming here for a couple of years now and none of our stuff ever, see, ever seems to get disrupted. Some old tarps from a previous shelter that didn't survive the winter. We'll be cleaning that up and taking it with us. Here comes Gable with more supplies. We've given up on the whole tent idea and decided we're just going to build our own shelters from now on. The tents just don't survive in these conditions. Can we sleep in here? So what's up next, bud? Uh, now we're gonna get one of these pretty cool long ones. Uh, and then we're gonna put it between these two to make a beam. All right, let's do it. So now we're just using some poly twine to fasten this stuff together. Okay. Let's see what we got now. Gable, how's the little port look? Pretty good. See. How much headroom do we got? So if I'm sitting down, you don't need any more headroom than that. It'd be nice with a little bit more, but... We're going to be sleeping down here we'll be sleeping. on the ground. Um, we already got a base set up. This is my knife pocket. This is where we're going to be sitting. This is our fire. Some other stuff. Another seat. Um, this is really cool. We built this and we cut all the trees ourselves. I just adjusted it a little bit. So it's... And gained us another three inches of height. That's better. Because we're still going to be sitting higher after we put down a bed because yeah. we can't sleep on the ground we got to get off the ground we're gonna have to get some of this stuff i think it is like yeah you have to find a we'll lot find of a lot of if we can find any dry grasses we'll use that you need dry grass because it makes it more comfortable for your sleeping and how long are we doing this for one or not two nights um Let's see how it goes now all we're doing is fixing the base I call it but our frame yep there we go. now how are we let's see what we got all right we got some height plenty of height after our bed goes in to still be able to sit maybe three sleeping bags two sleeping and our fire bags. is as you can see maybe six feet away. That's not bad. We're surrounded by rocks. There you go. Ow. So step back so you can video me. Three. So we're just lashing up the... Yep. As you can see, we've got the skeleton of the frame done here. We're going to be... This is going to be the entrance over here. Then this is going to be the back part where we put our tarp. And then tomorrow we're going to bring a handsaw and cut off the edges of here so we can put the tarp over. 
and we're tying it right now. As you see, it's pretty dark outside. Now, as you see, we can shake it pretty good, but don't want to shake it too much. Let me see how big you are. So we need to put one or two more beams down at the bottom here. Right here. Or here. But it would be better for this one. I was thinking. So the wind comes in this way through this valley. So our shelter should also act as a bit of a wind block for the fire. So nice tomorrow we'll finish the framing up so we probably have like, one more beam here, here. Ooh, like one more here yeah, one here and one here running that way and same on the other side we will add two more to the A-frame over here that'll allow us to have more structure in here to either hold up our tarp or our natural wall that will be made with also, dead wood and grass. Also, this is pretty good. We already have some dry grass around here, so. So as you can see, there's Gable in our. It's nice. A little home for everyone. All right, here we are. So yesterday we started this, we spent one hour collecting this and then lashing it together. So now I've got a couple extra pieces here and on the other side and two more here that I'm gonna tie in right here. But first I'm gonna get a fire going. It's already about 5.30. We got about a 40 minutes of light left, so this is our collected materials, which is aster and um, goldenrod, and we have milkweed, this stuff here, this stuff burns nice. Well, it's a good thing, a very good thing that we've practiced many times over the years to make fires on our own without matches or anything. I was fully expecting to use some fire paste here, but uh, apparently my oldest boy used it all up and didn't tell me. He also didn't tell me that him and his friends played with all the matches, so I had no matches when I got out here. Okay, now back to this. Gable's sawing down more dead and bringing it to me. Losing light quickly, so I better get on this. Okay, here we are. It's two hours worth of construction and material gathering, including getting a fire going. We're not sleeping here tonight, though. We're not sleeping here tonight. We could, but... We'll sleep here tomorrow. So right now, I'm taking the rest of the dead poplar branches that Gable has collected up and cut, and I am putting it in like this for some extra structure. So that's the goal for tonight, and then we're going to have some food by the fire, and then trek out of the woods, and we'll be back tomorrow after lunch and which we'll be staying here for 24 hours. So we're done for tonight. Didn't get as much done as we had hoped due to the taking a little longer with the fire. Now we're enjoying some uh, <laughs> corned beef. Yeah. Warming up by the fire. Crackle, crackle, pop, pop. Thames River's that way. 
Ooh, that's bright in our faces. <laughs> Fire's going good now, eh, bud? Yeah. This is my bed. <laughs> you still got to gather lots of materials to put down for a bed. Yeah, but we already have lots of dead grass here, too. Mm-hmm. We'll put down enough. Shoot for about six inches deep, and then we'll put the tarp over top of that, and then our sleeping bags. Six inches deep? Mm-hmm. That's a lot. You'll appreciate it when you're sleeping. Last time we did this, we did like two inches. Here's the rest of our supplies. And here we have our sleeping bags and pillows. Extra clothes and tarps. And as always, our survival pack, which contains almost everything we need to pull this kind of shit off. Here comes Gable after a 1.5 kilometer trek. Carrying about, and I'm not exaggerating, he's got about 50, 50 pounds at least on his back right now. And that's what we have built so far. Now you can see it during the day. That's two hours worth of work. And that pile of grass, yep, that's what I saw from that distance, is going to be the base for our bed. And then all these dead trees and stuff in here. That's where we're gonna collect our wood. Gable's beat from. I just put a dry. Oh, well, that might start it. <laughs> here, go on there and let's see how much uh, thickness we have down. Ow. So there's the frame done. Mind you, I'm gonna put one more beam here. And one about there. That is. So that if we do have the tarp up, it's just going to be that much of it that's not supported. So two beams, then attaching the tarp. And I think our structure is done. And we're going to go for fire, and that's how much firewood we have over here. All right, we'll go for firewood as soon as we get the tarp on, right? Yep. Four and a half, four and a half hours total. That's collecting, building our structure. Easily eight inches of reeds underneath of us. These are blankets, our sleeping bags, pillows, emergency heat reflective blankets. There's what it looks like on the inside. We got a separate area back over here. Put our backpacks and stuff under there. Another blanket to go on top of us. And then at night this tarp flips over and encloses us if needed. We just have rocks and bricks around the bottom rolled up to keep it nice and tight around there. Now Gable says he's cold, hungry, and tired. What do you want for dinner? Hot dogs. Hot dogs. Let's do it, bud. The sun is setting quickly. It's quarter after five. What's today's date? December 29th? Uh, yeah, I think so. 28th or 29th. Gable's getting dinner ready. Since it's so cold, we figured we'd bring the stove with us instead of uh, getting the fire down to coals to cook with, we decided we keep the fire going for heat. Having fun with my little dude. 
Here's a picture of the base camp at night. Here is inside where we'll be sleeping. And this is the fire. Last shot before the battery dies. All right, our battery died. And we survived. And yes, we look tired. Any comments, bud? No. No? Did you get cold? Yeah. Real cold? Mm hmm You told me you were fine. I was cold at some parts. <laughs> were you comfortable? Yeah. I don't know how you were comfortable. I was so uncomfortable. We got to put down more padding next time or use like a sleeping pad or something. Mm. Other than that, I found staying warm okay. The heat blankets made a huge difference. Um, we didn't run out of water, but I'm going to bring more water next time. What else do we need, do you think? Maybe a backup pack to charge our phones. Yeah, like a... I want to turn my phone on in the morning and uh, either it hadn't got shut off at night or the cold killed the battery. I had just enough juice, 2% to make a like 20 second phone call for our pickup. So we... We did our bushcraft in the winter, although it wasn't really that wintry. Um, we cleaned up after ourselves. We took all of our tarps and some other things that were already there home. So for the most part, other than the frame of the shelter, we left everything as we had found it. And like I said earlier in the video, we've been doing this in this area for years and have had no problem with anybody coming and touching any of our stuff. So I imagine when we go back, the shelter will still be there. What do you think? Yeah, probably. Now what? Nap? Maybe. Maybe. This is the turtle catcher snake tamer and his crazy clone. Signing out. See you guys next time when there's snow.